Yes, God. Don't just say, I want to do this, I want to do that, but you got to do it. Somebody said, take action. Take, take action. action. Most of us are unsuccessful for, for one main reason is because we don't have enough failures in our life. Amen. And I don't mean negative failures. I'm not meaning the failures where we just sought out to do negative stuff. I mean the failures that we ha that happen when you are attempting great things, when you're attempting good things, when you're attempting to apply for a job and you didn't get it. That means that that means you, you that failed at that one. Apply again. You don't have enough failures. You you started a business and it didn't work out. You failed at that one. Try it again. Yes. Somebody say, try it again. Try it again. Oh, I had a friend, and it just hurt me so bad. I'll never trust anybody again. Another day in my life. Oh, you just, just one failure. You got plenty. You know, I know how many millions and billions of people are on the earth that that willing to love you and willing to be your friend for the rest of your life. You just tried one, and they broke your heart. Try again. Right. Yeah. What's the old saying? If at first you don't succeed, try, try. I might say fail forward. Fail forward. And finally, the ultimate disruption again was Jesus the Christ. How was he the disruption? Why? Because he did several things that caused us to see the disrupted disruption that Jesus Christ had on the lives of countless billions. One, he split time in half. Somebody said, that's a disruption. That's a disruption. <laughs> he split time in half. How did he split time in half? Because all of a sudden, after the coming of Jesus, and after the death of Jesus Christ and the resurrection, everything in time became what? B.C. and A.D. Meaning what? Before Christ Amen. and after the death. Amen. Anytime time is written in America and around the world, in many cases, when it is to document a particular time and order, it is documented at the end of all of that. It is B.C. or A.D. Before Christ or either after the death. Why? Because the coming of Jesus Christ disrupted what? Everything. Somebody say everything. Everything. Muhammad didn't do it. All of these other prophets or whatever you want to call them. Confucius didn't do it. Whoever you want to name, they didn't do it. Only Jesus split time in half that the world recognizes the power of Jesus is coming. Mm -hmm. The other thing, he split the Bible in half. Somebody said that's powerful. That's powerful. You ever notice? He literally split the Bible in half. Mm -hmm. Now what do you have? The Old Testament and the New Testament. The Old Testament is Jesus concealed. The New Testament is Jesus revealed. Why? Because he split even the Bible in half. Some people, they don't even use the Old Testament anymore. All they refer to is the New Testament. Why? Because Jesus became the ultimate disruption. He split religion in half. How did he split religion in half? The major religion of the day was Judaism, where, where Jewish, the Jewish faith was the religion of the day until Jesus came. And he literally upset the church world. Now, you got Christians and Jews. Jews believe he was a good man who came, he was a prophet, but he was not the Messiah. Christians believe just the opposite. That yes, he was a prophet, he was a master teacher, and he died for my sins and became the Messiah. He was the prophesied one. Mm -hmm. So we are what? Christians. Yeah. Somebody said, that's a disruption. That's a disruption. I know. <clears throat> Some of you say, I didn't come here for all of this Bible teaching today. Yes, you did. I don't have you for a couple of hours, and I'm going to give you uh, what you need today to help you understand that disruption Yes. Amen. are going to happen. Yeah. And then finally, he split lives in half. 
Somebody said lives in half. I know he split mine in half. Whereas now, before Christ and since Christ. Psalm used to say, since Jesus came into my life, floods of joy on my soul, like a sea billow roll, since Jesus came into my life. Before him, I was destined for eternal death. Now since Jesus, I have what? Eternal life. Somebody say eternal life. Eternal life. I want to tell you that that's the best disruption I have ever had. Yes. Do you not realize I'm here today sharing this message? You're here today hearing this message because of a disruption. Amen. Because of a disruption. That's the best disruption I could have ever had. Mm -hmm. Now you've got the church world. And I'm here to tell you that if anything, I'm setting part of my goal is for good, and I say that in advance, is that before I die, I refuse to pastor a church that does not make an impact or a disruption in the community and in the church world. Mm -hmm. My God. Amen. Why? Because it's pointless to just be just another church on the corner mm -hmm. and not make a difference, not disrupt something. If nothing else, I want to disrupt some people's lives who were going the opposite way, who were headed for death, hell, and destruction. But through the power of Jesus Christ, I get to disrupt their lives. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Mm -hmm. In a few couple of months, we're going to go through an official name change to the thinking church. Why? Because thinking ought to disrupt our lives. Yes. Yes. Amen. We need to be a thinking people. And you know what thinking people do? They disrupt the lives of other people. Because yes. many times we're just walking around mindless, not thinking about it. Mm -hmm. But I believe the church needs to be disruptors. Amen. And not for negative reasons, but for good. It might seem negative at first, mm -hmm. but it's ultimately for good. Do you not know when Jesus came, it was seen as a very negative disruption. And you know who thought it was the worst? The church. Oh, y'all quiet. The church. Somebody say the church. The church. The church were the people who really had the biggest problem with Jesus. Because he was disrupting all of their customs. All of their thinking. How they perceive. How they have been perceiving religion all before now. Now here comes Jesus. Saying, I am the Christ. The Son of the living God. And that was a disruption all by itself. How in the world are you going to say you're the son of God? Mm. That's a disruption. What did it disrupt? It disrupted the thinking of the church. It's, it disrupted the thinking of the church. And I'm here to tell you it's been a long time since Jesus disrupted the thinking of the church. Yes. 